Good morning and welcome to the Onsen Budgie Smugglers with Yoshi and Crash. Uh, welcome, Yoshi, all the way from Kyoto. How is it over there, mate? Good morning, Troy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's all good, but it's freezing. Freezing. So what's the maximum temperature going to be there today in Kyoto? Um, I haven't checked yet, but it could be three or four, I think. Maybe two, something it, like that. It's early in the morning there, so it's probably around zero or less at the moment, is it? Uh, maybe, I'm not sure. Could be two. No, <laughs> I reckon. Cold enough anyway. I think uh, we're looking in the mid-20s here in Melbourne, so the weather has finally come good. Um, we had a... Oh, good. Nice uh, warm week for, for most of the last week, so Melbourne's been enjoying that. Uh, had Christmas. Uh, what did that mean for you the past week, Yoshi? Uh, I've been just you know, working, you know, almost every day. Um, I finally managed to run a kick free on Thursday, which is good. And it was the last day of the... Uh, for my free anyway, unfortunately, but uh, I'll be back on 5th of January to for the uh, first session of the uh, new year. But I just work, 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 busy. How about you, Toroe? Uh, yeah, well, it's all been, uh, I guess, about uh, Christmas and the break here in Melbourne, so most people are off work. Uh, I mm -hmm. got up to Lake Eildon and uh, went for a bit of a swim and a fish. Uh, not very successful on the fishing, but uh, good fun anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, so went to my partner's family's uh, Christmas Day celebrations on the 24th, mm -hmm. uh, which was fantastic. Lots of uh, eating and drinking and um, an exchange of gifts. And then oh. um, caught up with my brother and his children on Christmas Day mm. and, and then finished off Christmas Day with uh, a few beers with uh, some friends of mine, Pat and Soph, so that was great. Oh, good. Then uh, on to the uh, Boxing Day test. So for cricket fans in, in Melbourne, it's a big time. Starts on the, on the 26th of December. Um, against South Africa this year. So Boxing Day, I think there was about 60,000 people at the MCG watching that game. Mm -hmm. uh, I went on day three of the test, um, mm -hmm. which was pretty good. Um, Australia continued to bat and make runs, and then um, South Africa had a little bit of a bat at the end of the day. But good to see test cricket back in Melbourne, um, as it is on, on this Boxing Day every year. So it was a good week for me, that's for sure. Oh, good. Nice uh, weekend, like, you know, having a, like, you know, a Christmas with a partner, the, your family, then watching a cricket, so nice. It's good. I wish I could do something like that too. Yeah, well, maybe we'll, party, here, but... maybe we'll have you out here. Maybe we'll have you out here for Christmas one year, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's my. But uh, also good to see you're keeping warm with the uh, being able to get out and have a kick of the footy. So that's good news. Yeah. Just my, like, it was quite warm on Thursday, like maybe 10 degrees. So I could wear like, you know, a single like a free uh, jumper and uh, like a knee uh, link socks, which is like a good, you know, traditional free uh, gear in Melbourne, right? In the winter. Oh, it's very much a winter game, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving along. Um, so each week we both come up with a bit of a uh, topic or news story to go over from the previous yeah. week, a little bit of a cultural exchange. So, Yoshi, let's do you kick it off this week with your story. Sure, mate. Friends and trains in Japan flooded with New Year's holiday travelers. That's the news for me. Yeah, so I assume that uh, it's a bit of a festival festival time with the new year in Japan. So lots of people uh, traveling 
I imagine within the country or maybe internationally, I'm not sure. Um, but I, I've seen the pictures of the trains in Japan with them pushing people in. So I, I know they're, <laughs> they're uh, pretty busy and pretty full a lot of the time. Um, so uh, maybe maybe you want to elaborate on that a bit for me. All right. Um, you know, New Year's in Japan is like a Christmas in Australia, like, you know, Right. Families, you know, uh, gather together, like extended family, uh, gather together. That means, like, many people with family, they go back to, like, a, uh, like, a grandparent, like, a parent's house, like, in the, uh, so, like, a kid, she, uh, uh, grandparents in a different cities, different regions. Then they take a train and trains to go back to, to sorry, to see fa the extended family. That's why trains are packed. Like holiday season, like you know, means uh, seeing their families. Then many people just choose like you know, trains or friends if they live far away from their parents' house. Um, the Josh, do there is there many Japanese people try and get get away and go to warmer places this time of year? I don't think so. Just, you know, they go back to the parents' house. Yeah. That's all. Uh, and are there any special uh, Japanese foods that are sort of traditional for around the new year? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. It's called Osechi uh, Ryori. That means, like, a, you know, uh, lots of uh, small plates in uh, big plates serving to as a traditional Japanese New Year's food family feast very good yeah, yeah i mean we don't really have anything that's sort of traditional around new year's it's more around christmas so i think everybody's finished with the feasting by the time we get to new year's uh, yeah the new year's is more about drinking and champagne oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah maybe like you know some people might have sake yeah for new actually like rather than the uh champagne or wine or beer or something like that maybe sake i think as a Jap traditional japanese way to celebrate the new year yeah excellent i might uh see if i can find one here to have tonight <laughs> yeah go to the uh, rika shop or like the borrow shop then grab a sake absolutely all right um I think this this story that I've got for you is going to be a bit confusing, but we'll see how we go. So we've got uh, halfway down Punt Road, which is a, a, a quote, Stark fumes as rival man-cab debate explodes again. All right. Punt Road is the uh, home of a Richmond football club, right? That's right, and it's also an actual road that that the Richmond Football Club's, um, I guess, training ground um, yeah. is, is is based on. Yeah, sure. Right next to the MCG. Yeah, sure. I guess Richmond supporters was seeing in the punt road. Then probably Carlton supporter or maybe Colin supporter or maybe Essen supporter. I don't know. I could only guess Carlton supporter went to argue with him, the Richmond supporter. Then it must be erupted, I reckon. Exploded, like arguing into fighting, I reckon. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty good guess, but uh, this one's actually based around cricket. So, as. <laughs> <laughs> so the MCG is obviously home to football in the uh, winter, but in our summer it's home to cricket. Um, yes, so this is this is about cricket uh, at the the Boxing Day Test. So uh, oh. as I said, as I said before, Australia are playing South Africa, yeah. and uh, there's a bit of a uh, tactic in cricket, which is uh, a bit like stealing bases in baseball. Where the right. where the batsman who is not facing the ball tries mm -hmm. to tries to creep some extra ground 
um, mm-hmm. while the while the bowler's delivering the ball. Um, mm. But in this case, the the, the South African batsman um, was taking a lot of ground, and the bowler in that mm. situation is allowed to turn around and knock over the stumps and and give them out. But, no. but traditionally, um, this is not seen as fair play in cricket, so it's no. uh, generally frowned upon. And the Australian bowler Mitch Stark gave the warning um, more than once to the South African batsman for him to stop doing it, um, but yeah. he wasn't. So in the end, Stark didn't do the um, unsportsmanlike thing and actually give him out, but he he gave him some warnings, and mm. uh, this caused quite a bit of uh, discussion across the general media about the whole man-cad thing in cricket and whether it's whether bowlers should be just... Uh, getting the batsman out or not, whether that's fair play or not. So that's what that story was all about. <laughs> oh, no. Was batsman uh, suspended or like, punished, punished? No, this is the thing. I mean, the, the only punishment would be if the bowler actually, you know, put him out. But um, uh, it's quite frowned upon to do that. So it's just keeping the debate going. But in the end, nothing actually really happened. <laughs> Oh, really? Yeah. Should be something happened, you know. It's not fair, you know. Yeah, it it's definitely... It's not much like to, to some sort of the uh, cheating is a game. No yeah. good. No, and um, it's an ongoing debate in cricket in all, uh, in a number of games and um, it doesn't look like being resolved anytime soon until the uh, ICC that runs cricket and the rules of cricket maybe uh, makes some clearer changes around that. Right. It's like the uh, AFL has some issues as well, like, you know, uh, you're changing so quickly, like uh, coaching, you know, uh, coaches, you know, uh, posting the uh, issues and uh, players, you know, uh, raising the issues as well, then uh, uh, AFL changed so quickly. So it should happen in the cricket as well, like, you know, uh, players and the Coaches are, uh, you know, uh, posing the issues and uh, discussing the uh, organizations and uh, rule change for good. Yeah, I mean, if I had to relate it to footy, and this will be one that you remember um, back in the days when Nick Rewalt had um, a bad, bad arm or shoulder, and uh, the yeah. opposition players were punching him in it <laughs> uh, during oh, the gosh. game. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it wasn't actually illegal for them to do that. But it's un- unsportsmanlike, right? So they were actually able to do it without being punished. So the rules actually eventually were changed to say you can't do that anymore. Oh, good. Let you know. Let's keep you know me informed about this uh, issue. I'm very interested in what happened. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Um, so a bit of a review of our 2022s as we come up to. Uh, the border between 2022 and 2023 tonight. Yeah. Josh, how was your 2022? How would you uh, review that? Actually, you know, I try to do hard every time. Uh, I try to show efforts. Then um, something turned into reverse, something don't. For example, like, you know, the uh, on April 20th, 23rd of April, we had a, a free tournament as a under the cup. Then um, at the last quarter, oh sorry, I think at the uh, half, at the last game, um, I was desperately wanted to kick a ball. Then I went in the contest with the three guys versus three guys in the fourth pocket. Then uh, I went in the contest and uh, fortunately, um, I collided with Matt Gale and also an uh, uh, opponent player. Then unfortunately, I ended up having a, a dislocated shoulder. So then uh, I was off the field. So I couldn't achieve the goal with efforts. That's a negative. Can be positive, can be negative, you know, outcome. But uh, um, I got the 
surprise at Martin's farewell party earlier uh, this month. Also, I tried to train hard, you know, even like I do all my own drills in a free. Then um, the same day, my teammate complimented on uh, improving my free skill. That means like both good outcomes that are po negative outcomes. That's my 2022. Well, let's hope that uh, 2023, you are much more often rewarded for all your hard work, mate. Just my, especially <laughs> getting a new job. Absolutely. Um, so speaking of jobs, it's been a big uh, year of change for me. I've uh, ended my job at uh, Mont McDonald after 14 years and uh, mm. cur currently on the search for a new job. Oh, I'd, dear. I had to move house this year, so that was a big change. And yeah. also my eldest child became an adult this year, so finishing up at, at high school and uh, we'll be moving on to university in 2023. So that's a very big change. Uh, that's good. Yeah, probably the highlight of my year uh, was my trip to the US. So that was fantastic. Caught up with a lot of old friends over there and saw some good footy and commentated some games. So that was that was fantastic. Um, oh, good. From a footy point of view, the Hawks, um, mm -hmm. I guess they improved this year. So that was a bit heartening. They, they won a few more games in the previous year. They got some good young talent coming through. But um mm -hmm. I guess overall, so not not competitive in the competition, and really not close to, to making finals. So really in a rebuild, and I think probably they're going to go a bit backward next year, and probably win less games um, as they've gotten rid of some older players and really focusing on developing their youth. So regardless, you know, I'm still excited to um, see how they're going to go next year. Oh, good. So. Did you comment on the free in the US, you said? Yeah, so I went over to the US AFL Nationals in October and um, was doing special comments on a number of games there during that tournament, and that was really good fun. That's good. Like, is that on the podcast or is that on the uh, local radio? Or is that yeah, the they, they, stream, they stream the games uh, live, but also they're up on... Uh, YouTube, so I'll maybe send you some links to some of those so you can have a look at them. Yes, please. Yeah, looks nice. Like, a, how was the game in the US, by the way? Yeah, the game continues to develop in the US. Um, it's been going there 25 years now, and they, they were celebrating that anniversary. Um, obviously, there's now a lot of Americans that have been playing the game for a long time, and some of them, you know, pretty much, you know. 15, 20 years plus, um, very experienced. And then there's obviously uh, a lot of Aussies over in the US expats playing over there as well. So the standard is pretty good, um, continues to improve all the time. Um, but also, you know, new players, new American players coming into the game all the time. And that's pretty exciting to see. Oh, that's good. Like, you know, uh, we have a couple American players in the team, in the club as well. That's good. Yeah, fantastic. So yeah. it's probably going to relate a little bit to our next story, Yoshi, if you want to, yeah. uh, as we move on to, to footy talk. <laughs> yeah. We're probably already in footy talk, but uh, you had a bit of a story there for us. Yeah. Uh, earlier this week, you know, uh, Nick Nibold, you know, uh reviews that the, uh, he and uh, his family have moved the base to Houston, like Houston is like uh, his wife Cass hometown in the US for a while, for a year, sorry. So I was very surprised. Like he's not in the commentating anymore, or he's not in the coach, coaching role anymore, you know, next year. I was surprised. Yeah, so, I mean, I know in the past, Nick's talked about going back over to the US with Cass in the off-seasons. Um, yeah. back to Texas, and obviously he enjoys it there. And probably uh, Cass said, you've been in the limelight for the last 20 years. Now it's uh, my turn to uh, have a bit of time at home with the family and um, and live the life in the US for a year. Yeah, 
I think as yeah could be true. Also, he might need a break from limelight. Like he's in a uh, like a free media you know, since his retirement as well. Yeah. So he wanted to have some ex- escape as well, I reckon. Yeah, maybe. Um, so we were just talking about the USAFL Nationals, and I know Nick Rewald has been to the USAFL Nationals in the past mm-hmm. uh, when they were held in Texas. So I imagine mm-hmm. they'll be pretty keen over there to try and get him involved uh, to help out with the USAFL if he's uh, at all interested in um, the continuing development of the game there. Yeah, it could be true, yeah. It happens, yeah. So, like, you know, uh, my friend Rick, Rick Oranshaw, um, he's a coach of the uh, uh, Bali Geckos and the Indonesia Volcanoes, and um, he played for West and then North Melbourne Collingwood, so uh, he developed their fully in the Asia, also in the uh, Indonesia as well, so Nick Nibot can be Rick as well. Yeah, hopefully so. And and obviously there's plenty of scope and, and real value out of having those guys involved uh, in the far-off lands of footy. <laughs> yes, that's true, yeah. So it's been a pretty quiet week, I guess, in footy news in Melbourne. Um, not only are all the players and coaches all off on leave, but uh, probably all yeah. the me- all, probably all the media who cover footy are having a bit of a break as well. So, not much news in the footy world this week. No, not really. I understand. Quiet week, Christmas holiday. Enjoy your time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and it, as I said, it's really about uh, cricket in Melbourne this week. <laughs> yeah, instead of cricket, yeah, test cricket against South Africa. That's right. All right, so we have the New Year's Eve tonight. Big yeah, uh, yeah. celebration exactly. around the world. Um, yeah. So what are you up to for tonight and tomorrow for New Year's Day, Yosh? Actually, very unfortunately, once again, all over again, all over again, I'm just working. Nothing exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm guessing it's going to be very busy at your work, yeah? Uh, could be. Tomorrow will be busy, but uh, tonight could be quiet, some people say. See what happens. Hopefully tonight, I need a slow down. So just a little bit quiet night, please. <laughs> and so when it when it comes to midnight tonight, what do you think you'll be doing? Ah, uh, fortunately, I need I need a rest, so I don't do much special, you know. Um around this time, actually, you know, uh Temples and shrines are sorry. Temples are ringing the bell at midnight. Don don don. It's Joya no Kane in Japanese. Then uh, people go to shrine to for worship. But uh, fortunately, I don't do something like that. I need a rest. No, you definitely should get your rest. So that's good. Um, here in Melbourne, I'll be heading out to uh, my girlfriend's family uh, barbecue. Uh, beautiful um, that will be good fun probably we'll be home here in bed by midnight though so yeah uh in melbourne there'll be fireworks going off so they usually set off uh fireworks early for all the children so Mm -hmm. it's around sort of 9 9 30 in the evening after dark but uh so then the children can see the fireworks and then go to bed (laughs) Uh, and then they'll do another lot of fireworks at midnight um for everybody else so um fireworks will be going off down by the city but also all around melbourne um so if you can find a good vantage spot to look out across melbourne you'll see fireworks going off all over the place Um, but people will be out having barbecues because the weather is good uh there'll be lots of parties and drinking going on uh all over melbourne nice uh, have you decided where to see fireworks tonight? Yeah, I don't. I 
I won't be having it here. I don't know. I might see some, uh, see the early ones. I don't know. I might be in bed by the time the late ones come on. All right. You even need to rest as well. That's right. Um, I I will be up early tomorrow morning. My uh, son is playing uh, the character of Zed in a TV series called Crazy Fun Park, which is going to be released on the ABC uh, tomorrow morning. Oh, good. And uh, all those episodes um, are released tomorrow and streaming from 7.30am. So my son wants to get up early and watch them. So yeah. uh, that's why I'm going to get to bed early tonight so we can be up and, and have a bit of a uh, binge watch of that TV series tomorrow. So it's pretty exciting. Oh, that's good. Good luck with that fan. Thanks, mate. Notice, mate. All right. So... Signing off, uh, thanks to those who have joined us for this podcast in 2022. Um, really uh, finding our feet and finding our way in the podcasting world, Josh. It's been good fun. Yeah, good fun. Yeah, thanks for everyone to watching us. Also, Happy New Year from us. Thanks, mate, and Happy New Year to you. See you next year. See you next year. See you, mate. Happy New Year. Bye.